After a decade of marriage, Prince William and Kate Middleton are still as strong as ever. So what is it about the royals' relationship that makes them such a perfect match? William saw in Kate that chance to be as normal as he'll ever get. Here, we take a look back at the royal romance, from their days hunkered down in student digs at St Andrews, to the blockbuster nuptials watched by billions. This is William and Kate, a love story. Although he's every bit the family man now, before the future king met his queen, William was about as eligible a bachelor as they come. It's easy to forget now, isn't it, that, um, you know, for a period of time, Prince William was seen as the most eligible bachelor, if you like, in the country. Um, and, and he was, you know, this is a future king. He was single, he was a pin-up prince. You know, people had posters of him on his wall. I hasten to add, I didn't. Uh, before you go down that road question. Um, but no, I mean, he was, he was, if you like, um, the Brad Pitt of Toffs. In 2001, William enrolled at St Andrews University in Scotland. Also attending was a shy 19-year-old art history student named Kate. William, of course, met this young, beautiful brunette from a very posh school, but a very ordinary background, which, trust me, really attracted William to her. I don't think he was looking for a blue-blooded, typical princess. I think he wanted to fall in love and find the right person for those reasons. Kate Middleton came from an upper-class but hard-working family. Her parents were canny entrepreneurs and had made millions through a postal party supplies company called Party Pieces quietly over bowls of spaghetti bolognese and on um, sofas in a, in a student digs at St Andrews on a Sunday evening. That's where this incredible relationship began. It's where it blossomed out of the glare. It wasn't actually until around about Easter, I think, on a ski trip in 2004, that The Sun published the picture of William and this new mystery woman, Kate, on a ski lift. The secret was out, and the world had its first look at the woman who could one day become queen. Kate was a sort of very um, likeable, very steady, stable, um, sort of school prefect type, captain of the hockey team sort of girl. She was popular, quiet, um, and in many ways an unusual choice for, for William, but, but a perfect one, as of course now mm. we know. Although we now know they've been together since university, it wasn't until 2006 that the palace officially gave Kate the nod. Kate went to Sandhurst for William's passing out and the Queen was obviously in attendance and this was, uh, it was, wasn't only seen as this, it actually was Kate's unveiling as a very serious girlfriend of Prince William. When William and Kate were dating for the first six years of that relationship, if you phoned up the palace and mentioned Kate's name, they'd say, we, we're not confirming. She wasn't even a confirmed girlfriend, and yet there she was with her mum, dad, the queen, and you know. So it was this kind of almost okay. This is this is Kate, and yeah, we are very serious, and it is true that Prince William has probably found the one here. But not long after Kate was finally given the royal seal of approval, the relationship took a turn for the worse. In 2007, they split. But the pair couldn't stay apart for long, and just three months later they were back together, spotted at a concert to commemorate Princess Diana's death. And then, in 2010, on a trip away in Kenya, William finally proposed. The prince used Diana's ring, a gesture he explained was a way of keeping his mother close. It was my way of making sure my mother didn't miss out on that today. On 29th of April 2011, the eyes of the world were glued to Westminster Abbey. An estimated two billion people across the planet tuned in. Some were even watching from space. It was incredible because I, I was very, very fortunate to be one of six journalists that were actually invited to go effectively as guests. You know, we weren't standing there with our notepads. Um, and so we, we went along and sat in Poets Corner with a fantastic view of, of the whole royal family at the front. 30 years earlier, across London at St Paul's Cathedral, the world looked on as another historic wedding unfolded. Here is the stuff of which fairy tales are made. After the infamous breakdown of that relationship, there was a lot riding on William getting it right this time round. It would be impossible to understate 
just how important it was for Prince William to be lucky enough to get it right with the woman he chose to marry and to have kids with. Um, you know, there's no guarantees. And, and even at the, at the front of Westminster Abbey when William was waiting for his bride to arrive, there must have been that nag niggling thought. <sighs> You know, if you look around at all the TV cameras, the, every famous person that you'd want to pick, all stood there watching. You must have thought, I hope this goes all right. I hope I get this marriage lark right, because it was the, the failure of, of his father and mother's marriage brought the monarchy to its knees. If William's relationship and marriage were to even be half as toxic eventually as it crumbled you know if history repeated itself only half i don't think the royals have another chance and i think it would be the beginning then definitely of the end of, of the royal family as the guests inside westminster abbey sat silently the crowds outside erupted as kate arrived you could hear that and it echoed and I remember just thinking, my goodness me, you know, if you were Prince William or the Queen sat there in the same building as I was lucky enough to be, you would just be grinning, uh, unable to hide your feelings of contentment that Prince William, he is about to marry a girl who the public already love. Listen to them outside, listen to them. Ten years on and the couple have added three new faces to the royal family. And despite the scandals that have engulfed the firm in recent years, the Cambridge clan's squeaky clean image has never shined brighter, as they attempt to build as regular a life for their little royals as possible. I think if you want to kind of um, understand where William and Kate are at now, you look at um, what it was that William first was attracted to Kate uh, beyond the fact she was an incredibly striking looking young uh, undergraduate um, and that was that Kate represented a normal life. She came from a normal family with two a sister and a brother and they all went on holiday together and there weren't any real kind of things it was a normal upbringing. Yes it was privileged because it was at a very expensive private school but it wasn't gifted to Kate, you know, it was something that she was acutely aware her parents had worked hard to be able to give her those opportunities. Kate represented this um, one thing that was missing in his life and that was a chance to be normal, have a normal conversation, a normal relationship. And I think it's fascinating to see now that they really, we, we, when we talk about William and Kate, we're talking about the whole Cambridge clan now with three kids, to see that sense that they're still trying to be normal, as normal as they can with their children, 